friends welcome back to my channel in today's video i'll explain you class 5 chapter 8 lucy looks into the wardrobe so let's begin once there were four children whose names was peter susan edmund and lucy this story is about something that happened to them when they were sent away from london during the war because of the air raids they were sent into the house of an old professor who lived in the heart of the country 10 miles from the nearest railway station and 2 miles from the nearest post office he had no wife and he lived in a very large house with a housekeeper called mrs macready and three servants their names were evie margaret and betty he himself was a very old man with shaggy white hair which grew over most of his face as well as on his head and they liked him almost at once. But on the first evening when he came out to meet them at the front door, he was so odd looking that Lucy, who was the youngest, was a little afraid of him. And Edmund, who was the next youngest, wanted to laugh and had to keep on pretending he was blowing his nose to hide it. As soon as they had said goodnight to the professor and gone upstairs on the first night, the boys came into the girls' room and they all talked it over. We have fallen on our feet and no mistake said Peter. This is going to be perfectly splendid. That old chap will let us do anything we like. I think he is an old dear, said Susan. Oh, come off it, said Edmund, who was tired and pretending not to be tired, which always made him bad-tempered. Don't go talking like that. Like what, said Susan. And it's time you were in bed. Trying to talk like mother, said Edmund. And who are you to say when I'm going to bed? Go to bed yourself. Hadn't we all better go to bed, said Lucy. There's sure to be a row if we're her talking here. No, there won't, said Peter. I tell you this is the sort of house where no one's going to mind what we do. Anyway, they won't hear us. It's about 10 minutes. Walk from here down to that dining room and any amount of stairs and passages in between. What's that noise? said Lucy. Suddenly, it was a far larger house than she had ever been in before. And the thought of all those long passages and rows of doors leading into empty rooms was beginning to make her feel a little creepy. It's only a bird, silly, said Edmund. It's an owl, said Peter. This is going to be a wonderful place for birds. I shall go to bed now. I say, let's go and explore tomorrow. You might find anything in a place like this. Did you see those mountains as we came along and the woods? There might be eagles, there might be stags, there might be hawks, badgers, said Lucy. Foxes, said Edmund. Rabbits, said Susan. But when next morning came, there was steady rain falling, so thick that when you looked out of the window, you could see neither the mountains nor the woods, nor even the stream in the garden. Of course it would be raining, said Edmund. They had just finished their breakfast with the professor and were upstairs in the room he had set apart for them. A long low room with two windows looking out in one direction and two in another. Do stop grumbling, Ed, said Susan. Ten to one, it will clear up in one hour or so. And in the meantime, we're pretty well off. There's a wireless and lots of books. Not for me, said Peter. I'm going to explore in the house. Everyone agreed to this. And that was how the adventures began. It was the sort of house that you never seem to come to the end of. And it was full of unexpected places. 
The first few doors they tried led only into spare bedrooms as everyone had expected that they would but soon they came to a very long room full of pictures and there they found a suit of armor and after that was a room all hung with green with a harp in one corner and then came three steps down and five steps up and then a kind of little upstairs hall and a door that led out onto a balcony and then a whole series of rooms that led into each other and a line of books most of them were very old and some bigger than a bible in a church and shortly after that they looked into a room that was quite empty except for one big wardrobe the sort that has a looking glass in the door there was nothing else in the room at all except a dead blue bottle on the window sill nothing here said peter and they all trooped out again all except lucy she stayed behind because she thought it would be worthwhile trying the door of the wardrobe even though she felt almost sure that it would be locked to her surprise it opened quite easily and two mothballs dropped out looking into the inside she saw several coats hanging up mostly long fur coats she immediately stepped into the wardrobe and got in among the coats and rubbed her face against them leaving the door open of course because she knew that it is very foolish to shut oneself into any wardrobe soon she went further in and found that there were a second row of coats hanging up behind the first one it was almost quite dark in there and she kept her arms stretched out in front of her so as not to bump her face into back of the wardrobe she took a step further in then two or three steps always expecting to feel woodwork against the tips of her fingers but she could not feel it this must be a simply enormous wardrobe thought lucy going still further in and pushing the soft folds of the coats aside to make room for her then she noticed that there was something crunching under her feet I wonder is that more moth balls she thought stooping down to feel it with her hands but instead of feeling the hard smooth wood of the floor of the wardrobe she felt something soft and powdery and extremely cold this is very queer she said and went on a step or two further next moment she found that what was rubbing against her face and hands was no longer soft fur but something hard and rough and even prickly why it is just like branches of tree exclaimed lucy and then she saw that there was a light ahead of her not a few inches away where the back of the wardrobe out to but a long way off something cold and soft was falling on her a moment later she was standing in the middle of a wood at night time with snow under her feet and snowflakes falling through the air